Paul, thanks for taking the time to chat with me here at Surface Navy Association. So what am I standing in front of here? Oh, thank you for the time. So yeah, this no is what problem. we call the radar modular assembly. This is the basic building block of all of our Spy 6 radars. Mm -hmm. This is a radar onto itself, mm -hmm. operates full software configuration, and it has in here a mix of four line replaceable units. Mm -hmm. These modules comprise any variant of our Spy 6 radar. For instance, the Flight 3 DDG configuration, which is our largest configuration, designated the V1, mm -hmm. is each array face is made up of 37 of these radar modular assemblies. That fits within the space, weight, power, and cooling available on the ship, mm -hmm. gives an extended range and capability of the radar that's necessary to support that ship's missions. Similarly, the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar mm -hmm. is made up of nine of these radar modular assemblies per face. A backfit configuration consistent with the space, weight, power, and cooling on the flight to a DDGs, for instance, is made up of 24 of these configurations. So it's truly a very modular and configurable radar. So looking at the number of RMAs that you have, does that mean the radar itself has more power or just more range that it can cover? It has more power, more range, and ability to track more targets and, and, and performance mission. So, if, so the one that we're going to see on the flight DD, on the flight three DDG just is more just a much more capable radar than that. It, it's a more capable radar at a platform level. Mm -hmm. However. One of, the, one of the advantages of the Spy 6 uh, radar itself is that it truly supports uh, distributed maritime operations, mm -hmm. meaning the ability the radar has the ability to operate platform to platform in a very interdependent way, truly knitting the overall radar capability of the fleet together as a whole. So the Navy's looking at adding more ships to the fleet. There's the con constant debate about how many ships they need. In addition, right. the idea of smaller unmanned surface vessels. Is this something that could be applied to smaller ships that may not necessarily have a large crew but and can't support with power a large radar? It, it absolutely can. As a matter of fact, right now, this radar is designated for seven classes of ships, a total of 50 platforms, and that's not including the potential of adding to USVs and other platforms as well. We can scale this to any size that's appropriate for the available space, weight, power, and cooling on USVs or other platforms, and once we do that, again, those even smaller configurations can operate interdependently with the larger platforms and allow us to operate across a, dis a distributed maritime time operations type of configuration. So talk to me about the power requirements of this. How much power does this use for, say, what's, cu what's currently on the fleet of DDGs that the Navy has right now? Does this use less power and provide more capability? Much, much more capability. Very efficient gallium nitride modules is what mm -hmm. we use in the, in, in, the, in the front end of this radar. That gives almost three times the range uh, of the current radar and, and twice the number of, uh, of targets, or actually a, a significant number of uh, more targets than that. Um, however, the scalability of it really makes the available power and cool that's uh, on the ship somewhat um, um, scalable to fit the needs or to fit the configuration that we place on those ships. I mean, if I have more power, I can I can put a larger configuration radar on board. If I have less power and cooling available, I configure the radar with fewer um, radar modular assemblies. But that makes repair a little easier too. Just well, the repair is, is, is common regardless of how many modules are placed into an array face. These are the same line replaceable uh, units at the RMA level irrespective of how large the configuration of the radar face itself is. So talk to me about the timeline for, the, for this for this radar. 2019 was a big year for you guys. Kind of walk me through what happened. It was. 2019, 2019 was an outstanding year for us. So in January, we started off with Vigilant Nemesis, which is our 15th ballistic missile defense test, truly showing the capabilities and unique capabilities of that of this radar. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been put under contract for the uh, for the construction and, and, and delivery of nine mm -hmm. uh, production units for the uh, full configuration of the Spy 6. We delivered the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar, the first configuration to Wallops Island, Virginia for testing, installed in March, and we're operating in, in, in summer of last year. We have a second Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar installed in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, at our Combat System Integration Facility. Testing is going flawlessly, and the radio is truly, truly performing very, very well. And so what are you guys looking ahead to 2020? Continue to develop and, and, and deliver this radar. The first uh, array face, full-size array face, mm -hmm. is going to be delivered to CSEDS in, in, in uh, New Jersey for integration of the combat system environment that the Navy maintains down there. Mm -hmm. And then the next four array faces will be delivered to Huntington, Huntington Ingalls uh, for installation on the DDG-125. We've already started delivering the blow decks equipment, commensurate with the build plan of that ship. And as that ship continues to be built, the array faces will be delivered to the shipyard for installation on the 125. So talk to me about, the, about those Flight 3 DDGs that you guys are installing and comparatively to the in, to the infrastructure footprint within the ship that's on the flight two ways what's the difference for what we'd see in the flight three more footprint less footprint different below decks equipment mm -hmm. and, and and in terms of the deck house where the array goes itself much much less volume is taken up in the deck house itself this is the equivalent of going from an old tube television to a flat screen tv oh, okay this, right the depth of this radar is what you see here it's roughly two feet deep so you have four ray faces mm -hmm. that fit within the deck house you have much more space above 
uh, 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 above decks in, in that deck house, and each of these ray faces uh, operate uh, uh, very seamlessly within the modified deck house consistent with the Flight 3 DDG. And finally, beyond the Flight 3 DDG, what other ships are you guys planning to put these on right now? Uh, again, this is nine classes, or I'm sorry, seven classes of ships. Mm -hmm. So it's going on all the amphibs, uh, the carriers, both the Nimitz and the Ford, mm -hmm. uh, starting on the Ford with the CBN 79. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going on the, the, the frigate, as well as the, uh, the DDG 51s, the Flight 3 forward fit, and then uh, uh, back fit configuration on the, on the Flight 2A uh, DDG 51s. So talk to me about production there, though. That's a big production ramp up you guys are looking at in the next couple of years. How are you guys scaled for that? Uh, so we, we've highly automated the production of this radar. We have robotic assembly systems that we've, that we've invested in and readying ourselves for the HPNS contract that we anticipate coming out this year. We've uh, uh, signed our initial teaming agreements with some of our, our key partners, Major Tool being one of them. Uh, they, they, they build the um, uh, array frame itself. Mm -hmm. right? So we're starting to get our, our teaming agreements together, forming a, a very high power and capable team, and leveraging the investments that we've made uh, in the automated assembly process uh, in, our, in our manufacturing facility in Andover, Massachusetts. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing what this radar can do in the next few years. Thanks for the very time. Good. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.